The Wii U is a very unique piece of hardware. It came out in 2012 as a stepping stone between two of Nintendo's most successful consoles ever, the Wii and the Switch. It didn't sell well at all, in fact most people outside of Nintendo fans don't really even know that it existed. That combined with its very small library of exclusive games makes the Wii U already feel like a console lost to time, even though it really isn't even that old. But what if I told you that using this thing was actually my favorite way to play most legacy Nintendo games. Because through the power of custom firmware, not only can you inject your own virtual console titles from the array of already supported systems, the Wii U actually has the ability to run GameCube games natively. And I can't stress this enough, this isn't emulation. These games just run perfectly as if they were being played on a real GameCube. This is possible because Wii U's have the ability to play original Wii and GameCube games built in thanks to the virtual Wii, but Nintendo only allowed for Wii discs to be read. It's really nice being able to have all the GameCube games I want available right here on a menu, especially since most of them cost double or even triple what they did a few years ago. You can even make the experience feel more authentic by using an adapter to play with a real GameCube controller, but personally I don't mind using the gamepad. I've always found this thing to be pretty comfortable to hold. It fits my hands nicely, and it's cool to glance down every now and then and see the games being displayed on its little screen. It's like I have a portable GameCube now, even even though I can't take it more than 20 feet from the console or it'll lose connection, which isn't really even an issue in my tiny apartment anyway. As much as I love handheld consoles like the Game Boy and DS family, these days I never really take them anywhere with me out of fear that I'll lose them or drop them or they'll get stolen or something. Something bad will happen. And this is especially true for the Switch, so much so that I don't really even see it as a portable console. The only times I take it off the dock is if someone else wants to use the TV or if I want to play it while laying down in bed. And usually that doesn't really last long because I honestly find the Switch very uncomfortable to hold. Sure, it looks nice and slim compared to the Wii U gamepad, but I find that it has no grip to it. It always feels like it's sliding out of my hands and not like in a sweaty way. I mean, I really can't wrap my hands around this thing comfortably without it feeling like the bottom of it kind of digs into my palms. I mean, does anyone else have that problem or is it just me? I don't know. I do have really big hands that can't hold certain things properly, so I don't know, maybe it is just me. The tiny analog sticks don't really bother me as much as they do to others though. My main issue here is actually these super noisy clicky buttons. I know some people like them, but the sound starts to annoy me after a while. They also have barely any give to them, unlike the mushier feeling buttons that the Wii U gamepad and I guess like the DS Lite have, and I've always much preferred the feel of these. I know that sounds like an insanely specific specific thing to complain about, but it genuinely affects my enjoyment of playing games on the Switch. The Switch is also lacking a proper D-pad, and I do have a Pro Controller, but this D-pad just is not good at all. When I use it to play 2D games, it always ends up registering multiple directions at once, like when I'm pressing down, it'll also register left or right at the same time, and this ends up leading to a lot of mistakes in games that require those precise movements. This is why even though Game Boy Advance games were just added to the Switch while I was planning this video, I still prefer to play GBA games on my Wii U if I'm looking for that GBA console experience. The gamepad looks and feels like a giant GBA. It has a great D-pad and even allows you to customize your controls, meaning that you aren't forced to use the awkward A and B button layout for Game Boy games that Nintendo has pre-selected for you. And speaking of Virtual Console, the Wii U featured the ability to download and play a selection of DS games. Being able to play games that took advantage of the DS's touchscreen on a TV is probably something that no other home console will ever be able to emulate this successfully. With a variety of screen layout options, games that mostly use the bottom screen of the DS for maps and inventories are amazing to see running in full screen on a big TV with the gamepad emulating the DS's bottom screen. Nintendo offered a decent lineup of games on their Wii U Virtual Console service. However, with a modded Wii U, we are able to experiment with injecting our own ROMs to run on Nintendo's official emulators. Not everything will run perfectly, as DS emulation is a bit tricky, but occasionally you can get other classic games that weren't originally available on this service working just fine on the Wii U. It worked perfectly with the couple of GBA games that I tried, so I think it's mainly DS and Nintendo 64 that give people 
trouble, but more often than not, I think you'll find things work perfectly. But for me, the best reason to own a modded Wii U by far is the native GameCube and Wii support. With the increasing demand of games from this era, you're much better off starting a digital collection than buying from some crusty reseller, which only contributes to the issue of the increasing inflation of retro game prices. Seriously, I will never understand people who refuse to emulate games. That $250 you gave to some guy on eBay for Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness isn't going to the people who made the game, you stupid, sweaty, idiot, nerd, loser. You can even play mods of Wii and GameCube games like newer Super Mario Bros. Wii and Pikmin 251. Fan-made endeavors like this feel right at home on a console alongside the original games they are based on. The modding scene for Nintendo games is only growing too, so as time goes on, the amount of hacks like Pokemon XG on my Wii U will probably only be increasing. There's even hacks of Luigi's Mansion being made these days. Check out my second channel if you want to see some gameplay of those. It's so cool seeing what these passionate fans are capable of. And it's a personal dream come true for me to have more Luigi's Mansion GameCube content to play over 20 years after the original game's release. I still just can't believe that this is even possible. Some of you may have heard of the Triforce Arcade Board. It was a joint project between Nintendo, Sega, and Namco that used the GameCube's hardware as a base to make a handful of arcade games in the early 2000s. And here they are running on the Wii U. Mario Kart GP 1 and 2, as well as F-Zero AX, all work perfectly. The only issue is you can't save your progress in the Mario Kart games because you actually needed this special little card that was only compatible with the arcade cabinets that housed the games. But even without the ability to save, these games are still a lot of fun, and honestly, I never would have dreamed that there'd be a day where I could play these games in the comfort of my own home. And even without the ability to save, you're really not missing out on anything. All the tracks are available, except for a couple, but you can just have a long play session and unlock that final track, and you'll be fine. Ever since I picked up this Wii U at my local game store with the intention of modding it, I've honestly been using it more than my PS5 and Switch. Right now, I'm mainly using it to replay some of my favorite old GameCube games. I've been burning through Pikmin 2 for the first time in about 10 years, and honestly, I can't say it enough, just having all of these classics so easily accessible on a menu just makes the experience of playing them on the Wii U that much more appealing. And the same goes for Wii games. So many of the best experiences the Wii had to offer are directly tied to its unique hardware and controllers. Being able to hop into a quick game of bowling or a light gun shooter straight from a menu like this really suits the casual and arcadey games that the Wii is known for. It's been so much fun going back to those early simple Wii games with my girlfriend, actually. So, like most people during the peak of the Wii's popularity, her family had one, but she hasn't really gone back to it since, you know, 2008 or whatever. So, seeing her rediscover games that she used to enjoy, like Wii Sports, Wii Play, and all that fun stuff, has been a really cool experience to share together. So, overall, I just wanted to make this video to kind of show off and say that the Wii U has the potential to be a complete powerhouse all-in-one console for legacy Nintendo games. It's a shame that Nintendo didn't do more to take advantage of this console further back when it was, you know, new, but they created this really amazing, unique hardware, and it's cool that with just a little bit of effort, we can mod it and turn it into something really amazing. So let me know what kind of games you'd like to play on a modded Wii U of your own. There's so many options, it's just crazy. This thing can literally play everything from the NES to Wii U games. So yeah, let me know in the comments what kind of stuff you'd want to put on your modded Wii U. Have you ever modded a Wii U before? If so, what are you playing on it? It's such a great console, and I love it so much more now than I did back when this thing was new, because there just wasn't that much to play on it back then. But anyways, thank you for watching, and if you want to see more stuff from me, of course stick around, and I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye.